The one thing I will tell you about being a trade in Nashville, the easy part <clears throat> is getting the business. The easy part is getting the business. 100%. The tough part is fulfilling the business. 100%. Right? Definitely. <laughs> fulfilling. That is correct. And then keeping them all happy, keeping right. your employees happy. If you don't think there's drama, man, there's drama everywhere you go in every company. It doesn't matter. You know, if you're trying to escape one company because you don't like the drama, it doesn't matter where you go. Yeah. You, you, you can be a, a pilot. You can deliver mail. It doesn't matter where you go. There's drama. Hey, what's your problem? You have business problems? We have business solutions. Occasionally. Well, maybe. Yeah. Life is a fight. Yep. In business, every day is a fight. Man, is it. So, hey, what's your problem? Yes, thank you, John David Wells, the big voice guy for the show. You can always check him out at the Wells Report on Facebook. I want to I say he's got a .com. It might be the WellsReport.com. This is the What's Your Problem podcast, where we talk to Middle Tennessee business owners and professionals from Middle Tennessee, go figure, about the one thing. It's always something when you're running a business or if you're selling something or a professional in business. There's always a little, little nagging item that keeps you up at night, right? This is a video and audio podcast. Check us out at whatsyourproblempodcast.com. And our big, hairy, audacious goal for this year is 10,000 average downloads per episode uh, over the course of a year, because they tend to add up over a couple months. So if you know somebody who's interested in Middle Tennessee business, uh, share it. Please subscribe, share, rate, review, all that fun stuff. That would be wonderful. I am your host, Jim McCarthy, with JimMcCarthyVoiceOvers.com and It's Your Show.co, the company that produces podcasts like these. If you want a podcast like this, let me know. Today, Mr. Tanner Wesson is joining us from T&C Plumbing. Sir, how are you? Good, how are you? You are a, uh, a man of integrity and stellar reputation. I try to be. You try to be. I try to be. And uh, we're going to be talking about all things uh, running a trade business in Middle Tennessee because it's it's an interesting topic to cover because uh, we were just talking before the podcast began about ju- the amount of opportunity and work that's available here and around town <clears throat> is uh, quite staggering, isn't it? Yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> but of course, we get things underway with the Dad Joke Challenge. We, you were once a part of BNI. You remember Mr. Ed Fox, correct? I do. Yes. So Tanner was once a BNIer as well. He had a uh, he replaced himself with another person, uh, Mr. Trent Perry, who's been on the podcast. And um, now Trent Perry's moving on somewhere else. But uh, you know, we still we're, love him. We're, we still love him. We still do. love him. You can't not love Trent. You cannot. Yeah, that is very true. He's, he's such a great dude. Uh, we're going to be talking about all that stuff in a bit, but first, the Dad Joke Challenge is brought to you by Trade Bank of Nashville. If you want an alternate way to engage in a, uh, I guess, an alternate economy, especially for a trade business, not really getting slow around here, but if you're in a trade or if you're a service industry, heck, even if you got products on shelves that are languishing, another <laughs> opportunity to kind of get things moving is Trade Bank. Check them out. All the details are in the description. It's like an alternate economy, even networking-wise. So the the dad were <laughs> Jim talking thing too. Sounds like me. I know. The dad joke challenge is uh, somewhat of a challenge. You can laugh, you can comment, you can groan. We don't really keep score. You're gonna groan because you've heard his jokes before. Uh, the good news is that he actually records them. So we're gonna go ahead and do uh, joke number one. Are you ready? Let's get it. All right. Why did the baby cookie cry? Because his mother was away for so long. Because he was, a, she was a wafer. <laughs> it was, a, she was a wafer so long. Listen, I'm a little bit slow. <laughs> <laughs> You're fine. <laughs> Joke number two. Here we go. A lot of people think I'm amazing for training my dog to keep her fur so soft, but all I did was condition her. Ah, he that can- was good. The soft fur, you, it was training and conditioning the dog. I, I, I don't know why I feel the need to explain these. Do I lose points if I giggle? You, no, there's no, uh, yeah, it's a challenge, but you know, we're both kind of like, all right, you know, they do tend to get better as we go along. So, uh, number three. The other day, I drank a new kind of tea that is made by jiggling a book in hot water. Probably won't have it again. It was just a novelty. Ah, ah, because of the book. That's good. And tea. <laughs> I'm proud of him. That was good. <laughs> I'm proud of him. <laughs> Joke four. Here we go. Do you know what little yellow Pokemon loves Italian food? 
pizza chew, of course. Okay. I can relate. It's were my you, generation right there. You were a Pokemon kid? Oh, yeah. I never got into it. Yeah, Game Boy, whenever Game Boy came out. Game oh, Boy yeah. Color. There, I don't remember the one bef- before Game Boy Color. It was a regular Game Boy. Yeah. It was just <laughs> black and white. It was actually green. Yeah. It had the green screen on it. Yeah. All right. Final joke, I promise. My friend's new girlfriend works at the zoo. He thinks she's a keeper. <laughs> okay, that was pretty good. <laughs> Uh, no, it got you. So, it you got, got uh, you <laughs> laughing too. Got me. <laughs> it got you. You're the only one laughing here. There you go. The dad joke challenge brought to you by Mr. Ed Fox of Trade Bank of Nashville. Again, all the details are in the description. All the links and that, everything. Great guy to talk to in general. He'll he'll love to take you for coffee or meet you for coffee. Uh, and he's here locally in Nashville, and he's got the uh, the Aussie accent to boot. So here we go, man. Uh, it's about time we've had you on. You're a busy, busy man. You are yeah. all over the place. So I appreciate yeah. you being here. I appreciate it. Yeah. So uh, what's new? I mean, TNC Plumbing has been uh, going <clears> since, <throat> what, about three years, four years now? Yeah, a little over, little over three years. Yeah. Um, really, it was going about two years before that, just, you know, before I was actually licensed. I was just kind of doing it on the side. Right. Uh, but yeah, then I finally got licensed, and that's when we took off legitimate, legitimately. Yeah. You know? Because you're you basically you're learning you've already learned the trade you worked with a bunch of other companies uh, you decided at one point it's a it's a very common story mm-hmm. uh, that the uh, the e myth calls the three different personality types that go into entrepreneurship you have the actual entrepreneur you have the manager and then you have the technician yep uh, the technician needs to learn how to be an entrepreneur though right yep because that's, right. Uh, that's they, hard they 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 basically create a job that they own. <clears throat> otherwise yeah because you know i started as a plumbing technician and yeah. that's that's all that i knew you know what i'm saying i yeah. i've never managed people i don't have a managing background for people you know what i'm saying yeah um so yeah it was it was a learning curve and it's you you not only do you have your family that you have to take care of you have everybody that works for you it's yeah. a lot of pressure it's like another family you see how red my face is yeah. that's stress i promise <laughs> I it's stress it's constant stress Believe you me, I know where you're, where you are. Yeah, yeah. So it's, yeah, it's just, you know, you have all that pressure from all the, all the family there. So it's. And their families, cause they're yeah. depending on the business too. Now mm. here's the thing about Nashville though. It's like shooting fish in a barrel. If you're in a trade company, yeah. if you're in a trade, you, you know, garage doors, if you're in electrical, if you're in plumbing, HVAC, uh, I mean, heck car detailing, they're blown up. Yeah. You can't book a car dealer detailer. And yeah. it's almost it's not an easy job there, I say. It is an art. But I mean, if you're in a trade in Nashville and you're not successful, you're doing something wrong. Yeah, it's you know? especially well, if you're if you have a shop there unless you bought it 10 years ago, yeah. well, God, good luck. The thing, man, it's um it's interesting uh to see how many trades people and you can tell the ones that don't really understand uh the 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 notion of legacy and building a business over time and planting themselves in the right places because when things do get tough, <coughs> and they typically do, they're going to be glad that they did. Yeah. And they're treating a lot of their customers. I see it all the time. Like, you know, you, you constantly see it on Facebook. I called this guy, he never called me back. Or he called me back and gave me a quote and never came to do, to do the job when I told him to go. All the time. It happens all the I time. I can't even believe it. I'm like, why? People are going to remember that stuff, Especially man. service. Like, I want that service. Right. You're all over it, Matt. Are you actually doing all the call outs on Facebook, the uh, local pages and stuff? Yeah. Because yeah, uh, I'll I mean, put it on. You're like, on it. Once a week, I'll put it on like 30 something. I always have. But you're responding to people looking for what you do. All the time. Right. All the time. And, and I commend my, you for that. Yeah. Not my wife. <laughs> it's not your wife's not doing it? <laughs> yeah. Well, she's not happy that I always do it. I mean, it does. It, I do it a lot. Right. I'll be sitting, you know, I need to enjoy family time. And I'm like scrolling. Oh, there's one. I'm looking for anything that says plumbing or right. electrical. Right. I, it's, if it's a paragraph and I don't see, I need somebody roofing. Scroll, scroll, scroll. Yeah. I'm looking for plumbing and electrical. That's, and you recently brought an electrical on and with a whole host <clears> of <throat> new problems that comes along with it. <laughs> I know, you know, I might have jumped the gun on that one pretty quick, but it's worked yeah. out well. And uh, we got CJ, the yeah. electrician on that. And Pretty much when we brought him on, told him like, hey, man, you know, you come in. I'm not the electrician. I don't hold the license. Hunter does. Yeah. You know, he's a uh, part ownership in that. 
but we need your help, man. Yeah. You know, because we got all this plumbing as it is. It takes up a lot of my time. Yeah. I need you to be doing the bids. I need you to be. I mean, man, he's been knocking out of the park. Yeah, he's. Uh, uh, I, I know. I'm very well aware of CJ. Uh, if you guys listening are big Marvel fans, we did a pod a podcast with CJ and uh, another gentleman named Gray called the Capes and Hammers podcast. And CJ is a huge Marvel nerd like I am. You know what? Thanks you know. to you, we found CJ because of you. Yeah, yeah, I remember. Yeah, yeah. he he was uh, he was kind of looking around, and it was like a match made in heaven. Yeah, you know? it really was. He's he's amazing in front of customers. Yes, he is. And he does a great job. He's very clean. He's uh, fair, quick, everything you could ask for in a perfect employee. And it's like, dude, just make sure you take care of him. Yeah, he's got <laughs> he's got great social skills. He really does. Great social skills. And the thing is, is that when you bring other electricians on, they're going to want you. He needs to know he has to like pour himself into them. I think that he will do a good job doing that. Yeah. You know, because he's he's very transparent. He's he's on it, man. So a lot of this is, you know, starting not really putting the cart before the horse, you know, starting a plumbing company, I would imagine is hard enough. But now you, you, you stepped in the electrical side of things. Um, but I mean, building the plumbing side, any kind of company like that, until you have it established, it's tough to bring out another one. Is that what you're experiencing? Yeah. Especially when it's a trade, I don't right. do myself. Right. Um, yeah, I don't, I felt like, man, I'm, I'm awesome with customer. I'm, I'm, I'll be honest with you. It's just, that's who I am. I'm good with customer service. I'm transparent with people sometimes to a fault. Right. And I'm not, I'm not trying to brag on that. I really feel like I do love and care about people, especially if you're a good person. Like yeah. I, you give me a dime, I'm gonna give you a dollar. I'll give you the shirt off my back. Like that's who I am. Right. And uh, you, you know, gotta make sure uh, other people are saying that about you. Yeah. You know, if other other people are saying like what your, your your mantra is and who you are, that's your legacy. Yeah. And you know, if if they're saying that about you, you're doing that. You're doing something right. Yeah, and I want them to. You yeah. know, I'm not gonna. You can't please everybody. Uh, figured that out but yeah. i feel like owning my own business i didn't i really didn't feel like i could i could fail yeah. one because i you know dude i i i will tell some people showing up is most of the job you don't even have to be the best plumber in the world i might not be the best plumber in the world but i show up yeah and i'm and i stay true to my word and i do what i say i'm gonna do right I, and another big thing is just communication Oh my god. These customers hate when you don't communicate. You are you are so They hate it. Gosh. Yeah, they hate it. And I understand why. Like uh, you know, imagine one of my guys not calling me back and he's doing these jobs for me. Yeah. Yeah, I'm we're going to let you go. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like you're yeah. not communicating with me, you know what I'm saying? Communication inside of a business is a big problem too. It is. It was funny cuz in in radio for 18 years of my life, that was our biggest problem. We were a communications company. And, you know, sometimes communicating internally was a challenge. Yeah. I'm not you know? perfect at it either. I'm not perfect at Nobody communication. Nobody is. Hell, you know? you, dude, Amazon's got issues like that. I bank on it. Yeah. I bank on it. All right. Yeah. It never, it, it's, it's a human condition. But even when I am, you can ask some of my employees, like, I will humble myself. Yeah. You know, I started this, I'm, I'm a young man. I started this thing. I've not, I've never started another company and sold one and done this. Like, this is the only thing I've ever ran, you know this what I'm saying? This is your foundation. It is. And yeah. so, you know, where I mess up and I tell the guys, I'm like, hey man, I'm not a know-it-all. I'll yeah. tell them like, if you, you got a better way to do something, show me. Absolutely. Tell me what you got. Yeah. Hunter is, uh, he's holds the electrician's license. So I, he's really, I brought him on to plumbing. Right. You know, he left Nissan and came over here with me. I told him, I'm like, I really believe in this company. I think that, you know, if you come over here, we could really change our lives with this. Right. And, uh, it's, and he's it's, co-owner. Yeah, he's co-owner on the electrical side. Gotcha. Yeah, he got his electrician's license. So mm -hmm. he's super big brain, real smart guy. Right. And, uh, you know, I, I told him, uh, you know, it, it, he could come over here. We could be extremely, you know, we could be successful. Sorry, not extremely. Yeah. Um, but uh, I lost my train of thought, dude. Hunter. I'm so ADHD. You're talking about Hunter. Jesus. I'm, I'm yeah. Um, oh, yeah. That's what I was saying. Yeah. So I've, I've worked with Hunter. And so we would get in a crawl space or something and then hunter would uh I'll, I'll be doing something some way hunter's like man i think it would be better this way and this is a guy that has much less experience than i do in the plumbing world right and he'll be right because i've told him like hey man if you got something different i've told helpers that yeah. if you see something different just from what you've learned just let me know yeah i don't care i'm not a know-it-all i don't take pride in being a know-it-all i'm not one of those guys that takes pride in that i'm really not i appreciate that about you 
Because there's, uh, I tell the guys who work for us the same thing, especially yeah. when it comes to podcasts. We've got some people that are helping out with the uh, podcast production that we do, uh, some videos and everything. And, and I tell them, look, I'm a team oriented guy. It's something I discovered when I was in radio. I, I thrive better <coughs> in a team. I don't like having to come up with all the ideas and, and facilitate the, the flow. If somebody's got a better idea about doing something or shooting something, by all means, let's talk about it. All right. I don't, I don't have to be the be all end all. All right. And that's, I appreciate that. hundred percent. That's, yeah. that's literally exactly how I am. We'll have team meetings and they can vouch for me on this. We're like, Hey man, if you guys see something that you think we should have as a policy, or you think we need to put in our SOP, yeah. you know, because some, some customers might be mentioning something, let yeah. us know, you know, mm -hmm. we, we, this is not a 30 year old company. You know, you but go to some of these bigger old company. I mean, if, if they're saying this is the way we've always done it, that's a problem. Yeah. This is just the way we've always done it. What they do. It doesn't mean that things can change or can't change. Yeah. They you still know? do it. Because you're, you're still in, in the infancy of building a business three, four years in. Yeah. Um, that's, you know, you're scooting around the couch, man. You're barely walking. Man, um, you know, I've always been told, especially by my dad, it's like, just be a student. If you, I mean, I know it's kind of corny, you know, you pro people probably hear that a lot, but <sighs> If you just be a student and don't be a know-it-all, you can't stop learning. You can't stop being better. Right. If you come out here and you're like, oh, nobody can tell me anything. I'm, I'm as good as it gets. You're, ne you're never going to get better. Right. You know, nothing with your company is going to get better. That's the only reason I'm here because I'm humble enough to be like, if you guys see something better, I'm willing, I'm willing to take into consideration at least. So The one thing I will tell you about being a trade in Nashville, the easy part <clears throat> is getting the business. The easy part is getting the business. 100%. The tough part is fulfilling the business. 100%. Right? Definitely. <laughs> fulfilling. That is correct. And then keeping them all happy, keeping right. your employees happy. If you don't think there's drama, man, there's drama everywhere you go in every company. It doesn't matter. You know, if you're trying to escape one company because you don't like the drama, it doesn't matter where you go. Yeah. You, you, you can be a, a pilot. You can deliver mail. It doesn't matter where you go. There's drama. There's ways of getting ahead of that, though. There, there are ways to get around it, and that's so, culture building. Yeah. And believe it or not, that's your job. You yeah. know, until until they want to argue with each other, right? <laughs> well, I mean, and it's you know encouraging them to, and you're dealing with a certain kind of mindset when it comes to the trades, because for years, decades, we've encouraged um, those who thought they weren't cut out for college. Well, your only other alternative uh, is that you're deemed to a you know a dastardly life in. The trades and the trades for the longest time, especially when I came up in high school, were like, well, hey, you know, you can go to college and get the good, you know, white collar job or you can go to Henry Abbott Tech and, you know, suffer with the rest of the underlings. And, you know, it didn't dawn on me until I got out of high school and I wasn't really college material. Uh, I started working for an electrician and the guy I was working under uh, had his uh, full license and everything. And he had only been doing, he graduated from the trade school locally. And uh, I think he was maybe 20 years old, 21 years old. <coughs> and, you know, in 1995, making 45 grand a year. That's really that good. That was unheard of. It's like 40 million a year now. Right. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. But I mean, that's that's when it opened my eyes going, he's like, dude, I've got, he says, I've got no college debt. <clears throat> I've got, you know, I didn't spend four years trying to learn and, and you know, put stuff to rote memorization and regurgitate information to, to professors. Yeah. I just went in and I learned a practical skill. I'm out here making money and I'm making a good living. You yeah, know? you don't you don't have to do everything by a book with it. Right. I mean, there are certain codes you need to have by, by Of course, your, yeah. You know, your codes code books, but yeah. Do you have guys typically that kind of see themselves that way though? Is there a self-esteem problem that you find amongst your uh, Like they workers? feel like they're not doing like, good you or? know, my father, you know, one of the things that we kind of adopted here was something my father used to tell me, because before I went into electrical, I was in telecommunications. We used to put, you know, phone systems in uh, back when you hung the KSU on the wall and ran the 25 pair cable and did the 66 block cut downs, all that stuff. Um, he said, I, I had a tremendous self-esteem problem, mainly because we were working in a very white collar area, Westchester County, New York one of the richest counties in the country. Mm -hmm. um, and when you were a blue collar worker walking into these places, they treated you like crap, you know, because they, again, you know, that, that conditioning 
that I'm better than you because I went to college. I graduated. You had you were relegated to this, you know. 100%. So that was a self-esteem problem, but my <clears> father <throat> put it to me very simply. He goes, "You got to look at look at it like you're the hero to them because you're there to save them from something that mm -hmm. they cannot fix." And that's our mantra here is uh, be the hero. Yeah. You know. If whatever whatever your trade is, if if you're doing that and you know that's that's what you're, you're going into a house, you're servicing somebody. The number one thing you don't do or is say, I don't know. Right. You never say that. Never, ever, ever. I remember Hunter did that one time. Right. And this lady was so uncomfortable. God bless him. But he, he was like, oh, I, I haven't done this or that. And I'm yeah. like, oh, man. I was like, if you don't know something, you go out to the van, get in the van, and you call me. Yeah. And I can explain it to you. Or I could come over there and make sure that I'm with you when you're doing it. Yeah. You know, so that's one thing you don't do. You don't say, I don't know, because you'll figure it out. If you're in this trades, if you're doing plumbing, if you're doing electrical, we, we don't always know everything, but you know, the base to it, you know, yeah. how to plumb, you know, you know, the steps to get to where you need to, you'll figure it out. Right. Right. You'll always figure it out. When the customer asks you that you say, you know what, it's a little bit of a challenge, but we're, uh, we're working through it. Yeah. That's all you say. Yeah. See, in the car business, you would actually say, I don't know. Because <laughs> somebody, you know, because honestly, the more you, the little, the more, the less you knew, the better you got, yeah. the better you did performed. So because a lot of customers bought into the fact, well, you haven't become a monster yet. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, a lot of, I, I, I knew nothing for about four months until I, you know, decided, well, I kind of know part of this. And as soon as I figured it out and, and learned that I actually did know what I was doing, my sales went down. It was crazy. It happens all the time. Really? Yeah. And you, just, you figure out how to rephrase that question. You know, well, what about this? You know what? That's a really good question. Let me find out. Yeah. That's another way of saying I don't know, but in a much more coherent, not coherent, but, you know, strategic way. Yeah. You know, there's a, there's a better way to go about it. Totally. Yeah. Uh, I 100% yeah. agree. Because they're looking at you depending on you. Right. And the thing is with plumbing, it's you know, it's the most destructive thing in the world. Think about it. Maybe besides like an atomic bomb, but, <laughs> but water, it, it makes its way no matter what it can, oh, it'll destroy everything, Oh, I know. you know? And so you that's always, what you're here fixing for us. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's, we're about to repipe this thing. So it's in it because it destroyed half this house. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so, more than half. Yeah. You're sitting in one of the two rooms that are still relatively intact. Yeah. <laughs> and we've been dealing with this since September or December since Christmas time. But, know you know, that. I know it, that's rough. It is. But, you know, that's a whole nother set of stories. But, you know, uh, before we started, um, we talked a lot about just um, <coughs> the trades in general, uh, challenges within. And I'll actually go ahead and find it. Let's get problem? to it. We, you, you don't have a lot of problems, but you have a lot of problems. What's your problem? Mine? I'm just kidding. No. What is your problem? What are you dealing with these days? Mm. I know I you. Know. It's like you got a whole list of them. Uh, yeah, I can tell you one for sure. Yeah. The one that's I'm trying to fix the most is get this business out of my personal life. Right. That's the biggest one. Working on your business versus I don't know if, working in it. Yeah. I don't know if I'm supposed to even say that, but it no, that's is. Fine. I uh I fight really hard uh to keep, you know, business out of my home. Like it's I've always you know, I feel like I'm a slave to it a lot of times cuz it's I another just, child. Yeah, because it's it's a lot of pressure, man. Right. I, I got to make sure these guys have work, and so that's why I'm I'm always sitting here. It's not that we don't have it; we have an abundance of it. But we'll be booked out for two weeks. And I'm still on my phone right. scrolling. Just you know. it, it's a it's a um, an anxiety that comes along with it uh, yeah. because you feel like you're missing out on opportunities. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's a, and a, as a trade business, I can assure you. <clears throat> And I could surely attest to the fact that you have to get your systems and processes in line to the point where you know the time involved, the material cost, all that stuff, and drill down on that. Because we've had, you can have runaway projects. 100%. Because you'll get guys that, you know, well, it's, I'm, I'm still getting paid hourly. I'll just hang out, you know. Yeah, I got to make sure all of our ducks are in a row. Right. Yeah, and make sure, you know, the biggest thing is, Making making sure they always have work because they got, you know, if I don't have work for X amount of time, like I can't really send them home. And if I if I do send them home, they're not getting the hours they need. I'm gonna lose them. Good plumbers, you know. You right. gotta you gotta take care of them. I gotta take care of my family and the money we make, and also them. Right. So it's like 
you know, I'll always be, Hey, well, you can do your plumbing, blah, blah, blah. And then Skylar's like, dude, you're telling all these people we might be able to get to them. I'm like, dude, I'm sorry. <laughs> what was your perception going into starting your own business? Did you, how long did you think you mentioned earlier? I don't want it taking over my home life, but there's an element of the whole notion of, I want to work on my business, not in it, you know? And, that, and that's a very easier said than done way easier said than done. totally easier and there are coaches out there that well you gotta do oh really i gotta do that thank you i already know that yeah how do i get there yeah i even had like a therapist tell me she's like you know you have to do this i'm like give me a how do i do that i've been right. trying to do that yeah you know what would you do to get it well you just can't talk about it right you can't i'm like it drives me insane and it's like i'm there but i'm not there right you know, i'm sure people have heard that you i'm there but i'm not there and, I, and I, I'll tell you, what if I were to tell you that in the next 10 years, you're still going to be working in your business? Yeah. What if somebody told you that when you started your business, hey, you know, you're going to be working in this probably for 15 years. Would you have done it? Um, yeah. yeah. If I knew everything I know now, it's, it's just, it's very rewarding. Right. I always say that like, yeah, it's in, I've just worked really hard to get out of my, you know, my personal life. It's the main thing is I always talk about it. Yeah. You know, it doesn't have to, you know, if I'm scrolling through Facebook here and there, I'll, I'll get off my phone. I've gotten a lot better at it, but I'll talk about it. And I've been right. really trying hard, but it's like when you go to work every day and you're stressed out from something, work is mainly what you do. It's you're at work more than really you're at home. Right. So when you want to talk about it, what's stressing you out? What's stressing this person out? And so, yeah, it's, it's, it's hard not to talk about it. That's my biggest problem. Is it tough to flip and, and flip it around and, and actually say, well, I'm not stressed about it. I get to do this <clears throat> in a trade. Do you think it's harder to set, have that kind of mindset? Not I have to do this or this is stressing me out. I actually get to do this. I get to solve this problem. Uh, yeah. I'm, you know, I, love... I can let it stress me out or I can rise to the challenge. Yeah. Um, I tried to be... My wife is always on my wife and my mom. Yeah. They're just always like, be thankful. You know, I saw something with Steve Harvey on this thing. He was like, you know, or, uh, yeah, it's be thankful. He was just, uh, have gratitude. That's right. what he said. Right. Right. Um, you know, have gratitude and everything. And I'm like, I watched this, you know, it's very inspirational Steve Harvey and not like my mom and my wife haven't already told me, you know, have gratitude, but he's, you know, saying all these inspirational things. And I'm like, man, that's, there's way worse things out there. Yeah. I'm sitting here complaining because I'm stressed out because somebody's called my phone 10 times. There's literally people out there that don't have a meal. Right. You know, I just, I try to think like that. And I've always kind of thought like that, but now I try to program my brain to think, Hey, I need to think these things whenever things get out of hand and stressful. It makes me feel better. It does. Yeah. Cause I'm like, we got, we got it good, man. I've actually found, you know, as you know, we do a lot of trade work within J squared here with lighting and mm -hmm. things of that nature. Uh, the, the, the accounts that I've brought on board, um, there have been, there was a time in my life in previous organizations <clears throat> where I would sell an account and it's like, I just don't want anything else to do with them. You know, mm -hmm. I just want to move on, keep moving forward. I actually challenged myself in the last couple of years, uh, even with jobs that are complete. Uh, yesterday I went into a, a prominent, you know, client of ours. I was in the neighborhood. I stopped in and said, hello, knowing full well that there was a chance, Hey, so I've been meaning to call you. Something's, you know, you know what? Lay it on me. This is what I do. Yeah. Well, how can we help you? Yeah. Before I was like, I just don't want to hear it. I just want to keep moving forward, build, build, build. But yeah. part of that process of building, I mean, you know who Gary Vaynerchuk is? I do not. Okay. He's one of the biggest uh, business thought leaders out there. Um, he uh, had a podcast the other day. Maybe it was this morning. I was listening to it. He oh, says, Gary V. Yeah, Gary V. Oh, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, I just know about Gary V. Yeah, that's why they call him Gary V. He last talks name. about you know falling in love with the process. You know, he says everybody starts a business because they think it'll be like a bank that can buy them all the toys. And for the longest time, it's like, yeah, you got to get that shit out of your system. You know, yeah. because eventually, it's just you got to do the process. <clears throat> Yeah, that's you know? not that's not how it works. No. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> I mean, if you're really doing it the way you're supposed to and you want to expand and you care about your business, um, you're going to be partially broke. I mean, golly, yeah. I've been broke too many times. With well, it. not only that, it's, it's you're also facing, you know, the blowback from customers, but you can also face blowback from employees. And a lot right. of the time, the employees don't understand <clears throat> half of the stuff you're sacrificing. Yeah, they don't. They don't. They don't, they don't know what I'm doing. And it's like, they don't, that will never end. I've come mm -hmm. to grips with it. If I take it personal, 
then I will just have a grudge for the rest of my life. But let me ask you this, is the solution to that, getting back to your point from before, is it in communication? You remember Travis, uh, Travis, uh, Tyler, um, Conversion First Marketing, Tyler Krause, he was in BNI with us, mm -hmm. website C. He told me once his job got so much easier when he started sharing and was transparent about the financials of the company. Like so every, he, was, he was sharing he what? He was totally was, sharing with He says, because, you know, everybody wanted to have benefits. Everyone wanted this. They wanted pay raises. He says, listen, you do understand. Here's where we are. Here's what the revenue looks like. Here's our overhead. Here's what the bottom line looks like. If I add these items that you want, that means the bottom line gets smaller and smaller. So you guys need to help me get on board to increase the top line revenue. Mm -hmm. Okay. You guys do understand that because once we do this, there's no going back. Yeah. Okay. You're not going to want to give up your benefits. You're not going to want to take a pay cut. I don't want to have to do that. So as long as everybody's on board and you guys understand that, you're going to help me b build this beast. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. I, I kind of do that now. Not, not really. I'm not really showing them the revenue. Uh, we kind of show them what they've made in the past 45 days, this, this, and this. They don't really know profits. Sometimes I don't know profits. I got to get with my accountant. Right. Like once every couple, three months. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, I kind of tell them, you know, I, I'm kind of more personal with them because we're all a bunch of young guys, you know, just, you know, doing what we do. And I try to be more personal with them and let them know like, hey, you're, you're doing a good job with this, this, and this. You're knocking out of the park. You know, you keep doing that. You're going to get pay raises. Whatever. You know, I, I like I'm a words of affirmation kind of guy. Mm -hmm. I, that's I feel like I need that when someone does. I, when someone shows me that words of affirmation, like I'll get, I'll do so much for you. Yeah, you know, and um, I just I'll do that for everybody. And some people don't care about that. Some people are like, yeah, give me more money. Tell me I'm doing good. I'm still gonna, still not gonna do good for you. They don't. Some of them just don't care. And that comes with the territory. Yeah. You know, it's uh, there's the element of aptitude or attitude over aptitude. You can mm -hmm. have the best guy that's amazing at his job, <clears throat> but with the crappy attitude and entitlement type of approach to life and, and his job, it's painful yeah. because you, they, only they can change that. You can't do anything about it. Yeah, you'll never fix it. But you know they can be great at their job, but that attitude, that mindset will always follow them around. Yeah, and especially, that's, yeah. In the trade space, that, it happens all the time. Especially, yes especially in the trade space. It's yeah. almost like you got to kind of bow down to him and say, like, it feels that way sometimes. I wouldn't, but it's like, he, they, oh, I got 30 years of plumbing experience and I'm 20 years older than you. I don't have to do what you say in this sense, blah, blah, blah. Or they right. try to try to big dog me, you know, something like that. And it's yeah. like, no. And, it's, and there's a way to kind of handle, a part of our jobs as leaders is personality mirroring. Mm -hmm. And, Speaking in a way that makes sense to them, because otherwise it's not going to sink in. Hundred percent, right? Yeah, that's a big challenge. Yeah, it is. Like you might get to the point where you actually do personality profiles of your guys and and, and girls inside your uh, organization. Yeah. They just react differently. They do. Uh, I mean, I've I've there's been people come and go here, and it's like you, you, we don't always have control of that. Do you have a metric in terms of how many people you have to go through to find the one? <laughs> I could guess. Yeah. If I would probably have to go through 10 to find one good. That's a good number. We were like yeah. 15 to 20. Yeah. <laughs> so you're doing something right. Ten, yeah. But it's like, you know, uh, if they got good skills and they got a good attitude, yeah. let's roll with it. Yeah. I would say one out of 10. Right. I mean, I really would. I mean, I that feel like we've done right. good finding some good ones, but also it's like, I feel like we're a little different because I'm more personable with these guys. Yeah. And then call me on my phone. We can all crack jokes. You just heard me on the phone three way in with my office manager and one of my plumbers. We're just yeah. making jokes. We're having fun, man. Well, if they can relate to you, but obviously there's got to be a deference uh, and a reverence for the authority. But mm -hmm. at the same time, the attitude coming from you has got to be, no, you don't work for me. I work for you. Yeah. You know, and that's that for, believe it or not, <clears throat> if you're going into a business, even if you're in a trade and you want to do things on your own and you want to build it your way, when you start bringing people on, the attitude is you work for them. Mm -hmm. It really is. You know? can't do it without them. It's tough to do it without them. You know? can do it without them. You what know? do you need from me? How can I help you? You know, of course, there's got to be some accountability and <clears throat> checks and balances in anything that you do. Hundred percent. But, but you know, a lot of it is I work for you. I've always 
this is the way I do business. I expect you to come in as a grown man and do your job. Don't we all though? Yeah. Like, don't you like mm-hmm. you, if you say you're a plumber, you know what your job is. There might be a couple things we're going to show you that we do different than other companies, but you know what your job is. And right. so, you know, I expect these guys to do that. And dude, I lose my train of thought. Every time you're like moving your hand, I'm thinking you're cutting something over there. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I expect them to, I expect them to do, you know, as a grown man, you know, do what, do what you're supposed to do. And I shouldn't have to babysit you on that. And if you don't, uh, then you got to go. Like, I'm not going to yell at you. I'm not going to treat you like you're some kind of child that, you know, and make you want to fight me or something. I'm just like, Hey man, you're obviously not doing what we need to need you to do. You know what your responsibilities are. You know, that's not right. You know, you got to go. How do you uh, go about policies, procedures, uh, core value set up that kind of stuff? We had Trent set all that up. He did such a great job. Um, you know, we got, we went, we go through Heartland now for every, all of our policies and stuff like that. We're actually kind of changing a few things. We're growing and getting better at it. So we're kind of in the middle of that. Right. Right. (laughs) But I mean, in terms of, um, cultural pillars of your company, starting with a mission statement or a belief statement, one of the things I ask a lot of people, especially when I did, uh, business videos and, uh, we called them vid sigs back in the day, I would ask them. What is it that you believe about what you do? And I'll ask you that. What do you believe about what you do? What do I believe in what I do? About as what you do. About like, what well, you I know, do? What gets you out of bed in the morning? What do you want to see TNC become someday? Oh, yeah. I mean, you know I've, I mean? I've always wanted great expansion. Mm-hmm. Like, I really, I mean, I've strived for that. Um, I really don't know what it's my dad... Think about. Well, this is what I always say, and I would say this is true. Uh, my dad's always worked for himself. He uh, retired from the TBI, but he's also always been a builder. He could build a house when he was six, seven years younger than me. Right. Um, but yeah, he's just always worked for himself, and it was super inspiring. Right. It was. It's like even there were so many people that just did not believe I could do it or that my, me and my wife could do it, but it's like had to. we proved him wrong. We did do it. <laughs> Right. But, you know, that's uh, that's pretty much it. Like that was what inspired me to want to start my own business. A big thing was I wanted to be able to watch my kids in their sports, not have to be that plumber that works till nine o'clock at night sometimes. You know what I'm saying? I don't like my guys working that late because of that. I don't want them working till nine o'clock because I want them to be able to be with their kids, too. I really do. Right. I understand that. You know, some companies you got to work till nine o'clock at night and you're yeah. not you're going to miss ball games. My dad was my coach for everything. Right. Like he was my coach all the time. And so it's like, I'm trying to be a good father like he was. There's a guy, like even in other trades, like who do you, uh, is there a mentor that speaks into your life? A mentor? Yeah. I'm okay. assuming that if no one immediately comes to mind. It's my dad. Like I've, right. just, I've just idolized him. <laughs> There's a guy that, uh, his name is Dennis Tacker. He owns uh, Shippers Collision up in Lebanon. Mm-hmm. And uh, he came out of what they called an MSO, multi-shop operation. Mm-hmm. Uh, and for nine years of his life, he was the right-hand man of the owner. Um, and it was a big operation, you know, multi, multi-million dollar a year business. And he says, look, I just wanted to get out of that, open my own shop. I don't have to be multiple shop. I just want to be able to come in, do a good, honest, hard day's work, have all my guys on, on my team do the same thing. We have our weekends and we have our nights and we have good work-life balance. We serve our community and we do the right thing. Those are cultural pillars. Those yeah. are those are belief statements. Yeah. And that's that's what I'm saying is that you got to figure out what those are and embody those every day. Yeah. You know. I feel like that's what I'm shooting for. Yeah. Like, you know, I just want a good like I just don't want to wear these guys out and them hate me. Right. You know what I'm saying? Hate the business they work for. I want it to be a comfortable you know, well-paid job, you know, yeah. Yeah, I get it. It's a, t- it's a tough thing, but I mean, a lot of, uh, like the Mercedes dealerships I work for, I talk about them all the time that I do a lot of video work for. They, um, they're huge on culture, and their big primary driving force is I will fall, sl- you know, <coughs> fall on the ground and skin my knees to make sure the customer's taken care of. I'm, I'm probably butchering it. Mm-hmm. But they literally, around everybody's neck in the dealerships, they carry a culture card that's got their, they call it their quiver of arrows. 
and all their cultural uh, tenets, their arrows, if you, if you will, are on the card. And um, uh, I would always ask, because I would do, do interviews with their employees, I would say, what's your favorite arrow? And most of them would have to look at it. And I say, you know, if I were in charge here, I would actually just ask you to pick two or three of them that resonate the most with you. Mm-hmm. You know, and this way you can write out the right on bond being asked, which one do you like the most? What's your favorite? And they would be able to, you know, pull it off. And it's like things like, you know, um, relationships over transactions, do the right thing, do the, the right thing, not the, not the easy thing. Yeah. Um, you know, you're on stage, smile, you know what I mean? It's integrity. But integrity is such a, you know, kind of a general, fin- it's Too vanilla. General. Yeah. yeah. What does that mean? Yeah. True. You know? Integrity means doing something the right thing when nobody's looking. Yeah, you know, putting the putting the shopping cart away <laughs> when you're done shopping. Yeah, <laughs> I get what you're saying. It's hard to answer because it's right. like I have such a but vanilla it's answer. But to think about. It is, you know? and I feel like I'm being shallow not answering that. But no. it's like I feel like I really need to think about that. But you know, um, what I'd, kind of a business do we want TNC to build? And here's the thing: I'm I'm out. I'm on the outside of the bottle. I'm one of your biggest fans. <laughs> I'm a flaming advocate, as they say. I appreciate it. Right. I you just, know, whenever somebody's looking for a plumber and electrician, who pops up in the comments? Old Jim McCarthy. Yeah, especially in like the Spring Hill ones, <laughs> Spring Hill Columbia, you're always And I don't get up. a kickback. I'm like, Jim's <laughs> awesome, man. I always see you post for us. I appreciate it. You know, we might have to revisit that whole house, uh, you know, water softener system at some yeah, point. But, you yeah. know, I mean, I'm more than happy, especially if it's a business that's integrous. Yeah. Uh, and that I know will do a good job because I'm putting my neck on the line, you know, recommending somebody. But I know that, you know, if, if I recommend somebody, I want my my recommendation to mean something. Not that somebody's going to go out there and screw it up. You yeah. know, that, I, that matters. I just always want to do the right thing. I mean, I'm sure that's what most people would say. Just always want to do the right thing. But that's the truth. It's we're not out here to sell things to people that they don't need. Yeah. I don't want to. I don't want to. There is enough work out here and enough enough business that you don't have to take advantage of people. You really don't because you're just going to get another call and you're going to go to the next one. You're going to make money and it's honest money. Yeah. You know, I, I, what I'll tell customers sometimes is that, um, you know, we're local. I don't want to see you in Walmart and you want to punch me in the face. Right. (laughs) I've I've said it a hundred times. I really feel that way. So, you know, it's not all about money. I wanted it to be like that when I was in the car business, uh, because so much of the community bought from us, uh, especially down in Spring Hill, I became a little bit of a, not a celebrity, but I mean, if anybody was looking for a car, my name would typically come up in the comments because I had, you know, I, I called it finding your own voice, especially when you're selling cars um, in voiceover. You literally have to find your own voice. But there's foundation, there's fundamentals you have to go through before you find your own voice. Yeah. So a lot of my fundamentals were given to me through the Honda dealership. Uh, you know, some guys would take them to the extreme. I had to find the way I could do it and keep put my head down on a pillow at night and be okay with it. Right. Yeah. Um, and I found a lot of the things that were being done, I didn't like, but were, I was told, well, tell them this. They would load your lips. And sometimes when they would, they would tell you to, to say things, it was stuff like, I can't, that's not in good faith for me. That's not, I can't in good conscience tell somebody this. Yeah. This is, no, this is not who I am. So you would have <clears> to find <throat> a way to say it to them and be honest about it, be truthful. For example, when I got to Mercedes, it became, believe it or not, so much easier yeah. It was so much easier to sell Mercedes and Honda. <clears throat> it was crazy. Um, I thought it would be much more difficult before I got there, but yeah. it was a lot easier. Um, the reason being, <clears throat> because whenever they would put up the objections of like a dock fee or you know finance rates, things of that nature, if you were to actually come out and tell them, look, uh, your finance rate, you know, well, you guys, you guys make money on that. I would say, yeah, we do. It's a profit center for us. And it was like the wind would come out of their sails. And mm-hmm. they would say, oh, I'm going to tell you. Yeah, of course it's a profit center. Mm-hmm. You know, you think that we're making money on the on the new car that we just took $12,000 off the sticker price? Right. Well, no. Okay. So we got to make our money somewhere else. Right. That's why we have these different legs to the stool that's in our business that keeps us sustained. People okay. probably pulling up NADA. But no, that's fine. <laughs> but it's fine. You know, and we would, we would live through all that time and we always kind of, you know, assess our trades the same way. But at the same time, you'd find these things that, you know, you'd engage with customers and uh, they would start, you know, they would, your, your, your integrity <clears throat> level went up. They started believing you. 
not that they shouldn't, not that I was lying to them, mm-hmm. but because of the stigma that a car salesman puts out there, once you find a good one who's going to shoot straight, hey, what's the dock fee for? It's profit. Yeah. And that would just be, I know, oh, well, <clears throat> well, there it is. Yeah, it's profit. It's, you know, seven, six hundred dollars. That makes sure if we're losing money on the car, which believe it or not, it does happen. We're able to pay the people upstairs to get your paperwork done, yeah. process all the registration, do all the stuff that needs to be done. That's how we make sure that gets done, that to fund that part that part of it. They don't you know? see that. But I mean, in the trades, that's so easy to do. They don't see that they don't see that side of it too. No. It's like, you know, you got a technician that's out there. Well, you know, you just got one technician. You're charging me $100 an hour or something, something for this. I'm like, yeah, but you didn't see the person at the office answering your phone. You right. know what I'm saying? You didn't see the gas bill that we had, the overhead for everything. Like, we got to make something. Right. You know, and, and people want to throw, it's a red flag to them. When you get up in the high thousands, they immediately start thinking that you might be taking advantage. I get that. Sure. I mean, me too. If I don't know something... I don't know anything about cars. I'm immediately trying to be on the defense. Like, you know, you sell me a $60,000 car. I need to know what I'm talking. I need to know what I'm getting into here. Right. I understand that. So that's what, you know, I'm not a good liar at all. You know, my face is red. But but that's the thing is that you don't have to be. You don't have to be. And that's why I'm so, if I'm talking plumbing with somebody and I'm talking our service, I'm so confident I'm confident because I know I'm not lying to you and you need it. Yeah. You have to have it. Right. I'm not telling you something you don't need. Right. If you want a filtration, I'm going to be like, you don't need this. Right. If you want it, get it. Right. Sure. But I'm going to tell you you don't need it. Right. Because what if somebody come, else comes along after I told you you do need it and they're like, that's silly. Now I'm a liar and I look terrible. Right. And that's embarrassing. Oh, totally. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah. So. But I mean, and, that's, and you being the lead salesman in a way, that is going to get old too, buddy. Because you're going to get too big. And you're not going to be able to sustain the company. You're going to have to have like a sales team. 100%. They got to they gotta have that same integrity. <clears throat> That's why I feel like, you know, having this close-knit team and, you know, making sure they have good integrity. Like these guys moving up, they're going to yeah. be doing the bidding soon. You know, just it's not always going to be me. Like the big, I'll, I'll tell you right now that one of the biggest roles that you play is finding the mentors, finding even people in other <clears> industries. <throat> Bill Yuss here locally. You know who Bill Yuss is? He was <clears throat> pro door doctor. <clears throat> uh, I need to have him back on. He built a business, you know, he's been through it three or four times, building and selling businesses. He's been in the garage door business for over 50 years. Yep. He knows what he's doing. He's getting into a consulting role where he wants to help other trade businesses. He might be a good guy to talk to, you know, yeah. but finding those mentors, guys who have been there, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Yeah. Okay. You know, for a trades company, it almost makes sense before getting the money. Of course, you know, <laughs> revenue and cash flow is air. It's oxygen. But getting your policies and systems, your procedures and systems in place right. first is almost more important than the revenue. 100%. Right? I wish I knew more of that. When getting I first started. started, man. It's never too late, pal. You know, my, my thing was I'm like, be transparent, do a good job, answer right. the phone. Well, the do That's a good job all that part, mattered to me. That's it. <laughs> the do a good job part is the difficult part. Yeah. You know, because you know that any job, if the guys aren't being supervised or not being led the right way, it can run away from you. Then all of a sudden you're upside down on the job. Yeah. What happens? Trent was a big help with me on that. I bet. Trent was huge. He's like, man, you need these guidelines. You you know, he would come, he would come to me and say, <clears throat> what's this person needs to know exactly what their job is. So there's no gray area. He needs to know what his purpose is here, what he's supposed to do and what he's looking forward to doing. I'm like, well, that, here's Trent, the thing. You brilliant, man. Okay. I understand, and, and this, this is a testament to your character because you, I'm going to be really bold and say you, you allowed him to leave. Yeah. <laughs> because, hey, this is a good opportunity for his family. I get that. I completely understand that. But at the same time, did you fight for him? No, I mean, I just felt like it was something that, that was what he's going to do no matter what. I right. felt like that's, I felt like it would be awkward kind of if I was like, no, 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 no. What we should, and then he's got pressure on him. I'm like, that'll be awkward. See, the first thing I would ask is that, you know, I, I want to make sure that your your family is being taken care of, Trent. Absolutely. Yeah. Is there something we're doing that's not doing that for you? Yeah. You know what I mean? Is it money? Because it really does come down to three different things. In any any transaction, in car business, in, in <clears throat> lighting, in podcasting, if somebody's got an objection, it comes down to three things. The product, the price, or the person. In this mm-hmm. case, the company. So if you're an employee for Trent, because I know what you had in Trent. Yeah. A lot of people do. He's a rock star. Yeah, he is. 
He's going to um, be on TV. Let's be honest. Uh, he's he missed his. Co- I mean, he, he hasn't missed his calling. It'll be there. <laughs> the dude is a freaking sports player. We'll announcer. see him on ESPN. Totally. I told him, don't forget me when right. we do. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't think the I don't think the horse is out of the barn with him yet. <clears throat> it's not too late. You can actually come back and say, you know what? It's almost like the Columbo. Remember Columbo, the show? Mm-hmm. One more thing. He would always turn around at the end of the TV show when he was going to deliver the right hook. Yeah. He, one more thing. And he would just, you know, totally come out of left field. You got to do that. You know, I, I, I want to keep you. You're valuable to my company. What is it you need for your family? And how can we accommodate that? That question, that's a fair question. You've earned the right to ask that. Yeah, I should have done that. <laughs> well, it's, you know. He's going to listen to this and be like, man. <laughs> you know, it's, you can kind of tell even in this podcast, there's a little bit of social, socially awkwardness with me. Just no. a little bit. I'm not like a public speaker. No. And so whenever. Dude, you're very well spoken. What are you talking about? There's a little. It's, a little, it's there. Oh, well, but, you know. I don't think so. When he came to me, you know, when I got hit with that, I'm like, oh, my God. It's like I kind of freeze up. Yeah. You know, I'm like, oh, I don't even know what to say. Right. You know, because Trent would know what to say if something like that happened. Trent, right. he would handle it perfectly he always knows what to say and if he messes up somewhere you don't even know when he fumbles because you know what he's thinking right now what he didn't even fight for me yeah you didn't even fight for me man. i kind of thought about that jim yeah you know what i did kind of think about that that's your problem i did kind of think about that i yeah. was like you know I, I didn't even say i really did i promise you i'm not just saying that because you mentioned it no, i was that's like fine i was like you know what <laughs> i didn't even ask him why right because all he did Here's the thing. If you understand that any given situation on the planet that we're in, right now we're in a sell or be sold situation. This podcast, this conversation, someone's doing the selling and someone's being sold. Okay? It's happening. It's happening. If you understand that and you understand the elements and and tenets of selling, all he did was present you with an objection as to why he wanted to keep not keep moving on with your company. Yeah. Okay, I found a better opportunity. Someone came, you know, someone's got a better car to sell me. I'm going to go with him. Well, why is that? What's he What's he giving you that I'm not? Yeah. Believe it or not, we fought for CJ the same way once upon a time. Yeah. In a previous organization, he wanted to move with, with a, a girl out of state. And I don't know if he'll get mad at me for talking about this, but we literally sat him down and said, okay, what is it that you need? Because you're valuable to us. <clears throat> There's nothing wrong with saying you're valuable to me. You could literally, after this podcast is over, call Trent and be like, look, dude, um, I think it's just fair to both of us for me to ask you this one thing. Yeah. What do I need to do? What, do, what, what is it that your family needs? And, and how, I do, think, how can I accommodate that? Because I, I, I want to let you know that I at least fought for you. Yeah, because it's <laughs> the first thing that hits me is it's almost embarrassing when someone has to quit. Right. When someone feels like they need to quit because something's better. It's almost embarrassing to me. It's just an me. unspoken objection. That's all it is. It is because I'm. it embarrasses me because I'm like, oh, man, what did I What did I do? You know, like, I know, I'm just sitting here thinking. I think I, th- I thought too far into the money aspect. Like, he's making more. Well, you know, like, Trent's a little different, man. I, I think, you know, if he's making a little bit more, it wouldn't have really mattered. You know, if, if something here was better. You know, I think I started kind of thinking about that. When you have somebody that believes in your company, will fight for your company, has got the best attitude, and then the aptitude comes along with it, that's what Trent is. I mean, the company that's getting them is getting a good deal, is getting a good guy. Yeah. But that's the thing, and that's what you're fighting for. When you're in a a business owner, you fight everything to hold on to that. I agree. Because when you fight for it, he's going to remember it. Five years from now, I'm glad I stayed because he fought for me. Well, he made it work for me and my family. It's not like I didn't want to. Right. It's just that it's. You just didn't know. Well, it's not even that. It's sometimes I don't say or do the right things, especially if I'm in like shock of something. Right. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, okay, well, Blind then side. I'll sit there and think when I'm laying down at night, I'm like, man, I should have said something. Like at this point, yeah. you know, I should have said something. Yeah. And I, when he, you know, when he first laid that, when he told me, I was like, man, I was like, I just, oh, I didn't expect that. That's yeah, yeah. the last thing I expected. And I just didn't, I didn't know what to say. But I guess he's already made the commitment to move on and everything. So, 
Yeah, I, I think so. I think he did. And I was like, you know, he's going to be making more monies. You know, he might love that job. I felt like. Is it a lot more money? Do you know that? Like, yeah, I mean, it's pretty. I, dude, I knew that would happen. Yeah. I told him since day one, we always laughed about it. I said, dude, BNI is going to put you on the map. You are going to put yourself on the map at BNI. Right. Because you're just, you're worth a million bucks, dude. You're worth a million bucks somewhere. I just don't know where it's at. Right. But yeah. Well, why isn't it with you? Because I can't afford him. I, I never that. felt like I could afford him, to be honest. I'd never, I, I, me and my wife always like, hey, dude, like, I can't believe you're here in a plumbing company doing this. You know what I'm saying? You should right. be representing ESPN. Your, your personality is at that level. I think, I think that if he got the right eyes on him somewhere, I'm serious. I think he would make it. He needs to go audition some, for something somewhere. Well, that's what my, my thought for a podcast for you guys was that him do like a weekly podcast of sports updates, whatever, because he'd be perfect for it. And it's powered by TNC plumbing and electrical. Yeah. And that was my, my big idea. You know, yeah. and, that, and that he can kind of get an exercise. He'd be able to feed both of those spirit animals with his marketing prowess and his ability to sell. He's a born salesman. Yeah, he is. That's all a sportscaster is. Yeah. A very articulate orator that can sell. Yeah, I've know? never met anybody like him. I don't know if I've seen TV personalities that have what he has. It's very true. I mean, serious. I'm like, yeah. dude, Trent, I, I kind of think about it now. I never thought about it before. I hardly yeah. watch TV, but I'm like, Trent would do better than that. <laughs> Trent's better than that guy. I was like, but I'll tell you right now that uh, his future will be in some sort of podcasting because that's where the that's where the industry is going. He's going to do good, man. And if you were able to start that for him, and again, you still have an open door. It's not all said and done. The story's not over. You can always reach out to him and say, "Listen, I know that you know we're probably too far gone here, but I want you to let you know, doors always open. If this thing doesn't work out, I want to talk. I want you to. I want to be the first call. You want to know something? What? I kind of dipped into that a little bit. Me and him were talking last night or the night before. I was like, hey, man, you know, uh, if I need your help down the road with a little bit of organization, you care if like I holler at you and, you know, you help me a little bit. I could just kind of like sub work, you know, yeah. not you come work for me directly. I was like, you care? And he's oh, man, you know, I, don't, I would. I'd love to, man. I'd love, I'd love to help you if you need me, blah, blah, blah. I'm I like, bet. You know, put my foot, put my foot right in there just a little you bit. Just to, <laughs> you, I mean, yes, you, there's an element where you can buy that kind of a relationship, but when you get a guy like him involved, like crap, I may go after him. <laughs> Do it, man. He de he deserves good things, man. He does. Yeah, but I think ultimately, when it comes to this kind of stuff, buddy, if you can, you get him back in. Because I mean, your business to get the revenue going is not hard. Like we talked about in the beginning, getting your systems and procedures in place to accommodate and maximize the time and be efficient. And, you know, make sure that you're making uh, your, your top line revenue shouldn't be a problem, but maximizing your bottom line <clears throat> yeah. is the biggest problem, you know, because this stuff can really run away from you. That's all yeah. systems and processes. So with that being said, um, people could find and follow you at tncplumbing.com, right? tncplumbingtn.com. tncplumbingtn. Yeah, you got to spell it out. tncplumbingtn.com. So T-A-N-D. Is there any way you can do tcplumbing.com? I wish. I don't Is know. it available? You know, my wife got that name, that website. <laughs> uh, she's the one that got it started. I don't think they could. I think Buddy. we tried. Hey, you know, part of your role as a business owner is finding that stuff. The easiest way to get people, take the hoops away. Yeah. Right? I tell all my podcast clients, you know, I had someone, he's like, well, you know, I wanted to get, you know, the dash this dash <clears throat> dot, you know, biz. I'm going, oh. Can you do it this way? And certain enough, I, I came up with another phrasing, and sure enough, it was available. Buy it. Yeah. And that's like that's the thing now. Yeah. I'm like, just take all the hoops away. Yeah. I don't Make like it easy. TNC plumbing TN. I'm like, ah, it's to a little bit, a little bit much. Yeah. Like TC TC plumb plumbing. Com, like something quick. And you might be point. able to find TC plumbing dot com. Maybe. You know, like after this podcast, before before it airs, yeah. Before somebody else takes it out from underneath you, yeah. Go search on you know all the different derivations of Go, of uh, GoDaddy. Find the one that makes sense. I literally did this because mine was JimMcCarthyVoiceOvers.com. Oh, goodness. Right. Mouthful, right? Oh, my goodness. Guess what I found, though? What? JMVOs.com. That's it right there. JMVOs.com. To the point. Yep. That's right to the point. Right. That's what and we I just, needed. And I went out and pointed it to the same freaking website. That's all I did. That's right to the point. Right. You buy all those derivations and point them to the same thing. Yeah. And it's usually the one that makes the most sense. Yeah. So, therefore, I'll, I'll get off my soapbox and uh, 
point everybody. I, I, is there anything else you'd like to discuss? <laughs> Taxes, man. I'm sick of them. I can't help you there. You got to talk to Alex Jerkins about that. <laughs> so, well, anyway, man, I really do appreciate you being on. It's always a good conversation. You're a lot, give yourself a lot more credit. Believe in me, when you start saying that I'm better at something that I think than I am, your life will get better. Get more well, confidence as I go. Yeah. You're a better you're you're a better speaker than you think. I'll get better at speaking. Of course you, you will. I kind of ramble and stu- uh, you know stutter sometimes. Like right yeah. there. Mm. Uh, to, what, well, am I not doing it? Well, I've been doing this for twenty years. I still stammer. I'm ADHD too. I'll space out so many times. If you're doing something behind the camera, I'm like, <laughs> that's <laughs> okay. <Squirrel. laughs> that's okay. But the fact of the matter is, you're very well spoken. Don't kid yourself. I appreciate it. Yeah, believe me. Trust me. I know what I'm talking about. Because I mean, listen to me. I'm stammering all over the place sometimes because really. I get excited. <laughs> Right. I've got I overcome it because I've got charisma and energy and character. Yeah. But the fact of the matter is I I'm a freaking blithering mess sometimes. And I'm fine to admit that. Um, Tell me about it. Me. Every everybody uh, make sure that you check out where you can find and follow Tanner uh, and TNC plumbing. All the details are in the description as well. Uh, he's on Facebook. He's really dominating uh, the Thompson Station, Middle Tennessee or Spring Hill, uh, Franklin area. That's your their corridor, right? Definitely. Definitely. Yeah, we, we got. About 200 reviews on Google, so nice. We're doing pretty good. 4.9 stars. Oh my gosh, 204.9s, uh, buddy. You got one of those? I think I do somewhere. Uh, hold on, I have it in here somewhere. Yeah, I know you do. No, it's not that. Not that one. Where did it go? There we go. Mm, that's it right there. See? Oh, I like it. So make sure you check all that stuff out. And of course, what's your problem? Podcast.com. Uh, we're always looking to grow this podcast. If you know somebody who would be a great fit to be a guest who's here in Middle Tennessee and can make it down to the uh, J2 HQ <coughs> in Thompson Station, we'd be more than happy to have them. Um, reach out at what's your problem? Podcast.com. Again, the big, hairy, audacious goal for 2023 going into 2024 10,000 average downloads per episode. That's what we're looking to do. Try to shoot high. I mean, hey, maybe we'll, we'll adjust it to 20,000 in 2024, depending on how we perform. Share us out. Subscribe, review, rate, share with your friends. What's your problem? Podcast.com. Tanner, thanks for being here, pal. Appreciate it.